How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode, episode number 16, moving into the third and final part of the 2024-25 regular season. In the last one, we took a pause a day before the trade deadline, 62 games through the season, pausing atop the Pacific Division, currently with 82 points, which is good enough for just six points ahead of the Vancouver Canucks, who are we, about to, we are about to play in our next game, actually, who are just a couple wins below us. So it's pretty tight in the Pacific, but things are looking good at the top. Our big questions now heading into the back half, or the back, you know, 20 games of the year now is, Heading into the playoffs, what do we want to make sure is really firing on all cylinders, patching up the little cracks that may be there in the team, and making sure that we are not just a playoff team as, as we've been the last three years who get a first or second round exit, but we want to say at least conference finals in the 2025 postseason. So in the last one, our big questions were what's up with the bottom six, what's up with the penalty kill, and do we make any defensive changes. Probably the biggest problem for our forwards the last couple years has been the third line and we've had a really hard time trying to get consistent results from them. For example, Jaden Schwartz last season saw a lot of third line minutes and he had, you know, he went down from 75 points to 62 points and was a plus five. We put him back to the second line this season. He's on pace to beat those 62 points and is already a plus 20. So obviously playing with the better line mates here in Trocek and Marco doesn't hurt. So Palat, it's tough that he's been relegated down to the third line. Not to pick on him, but it's been, you know, quite the downgrade from a career high of 65 points last year to 35 this year and a negative 13. 33 years of age, on an expiring deal, lots of rookies coming to fight for that, you know, those bottom six minutes from the AHL next season. Andre Palat is very likely not coming back next year. So now the question becomes, do we trade him now and get some value? I think if he was doing well, there'd be no reason to trade him away to just try and recoup some value. If he's helping the team, let's keep him. And if he walks, he walks. But if he's not really helping the third line, we may want to try and change the identity of this line and turn it into a bit more of a defensive one. Palat, Shaw, a couple playmakers. Cole Lynn's been good, but we need to batten down the hatches a little bit and maybe try a different approach. So my thinking would probably be get Chandler Stevenson back onto the third line, get a new third line center, put Mason Shaw down on the fourth line with uh, whoever the fourth line forward would be now, probably Brandon Tanev, and possibly even move Ryan Suzuki back down to the AHL. His rookie season has not been horrible at all. 25 points in 62 games, negative five, but I'm not sure if he's the guy to keep uh, as the third line center, playing a bit above his pay grade at the moment. Mason Shaw, they've been rotating, alternating a little bit, third and fourth line. He has 23 points in 62 games. These guys are close to 30 point paces in their rookie season. Not bad at all. But for right now, I don't know if I want to risk that heading into the playoffs. Defensively, Hayden Fleury's been doing very well with the opportunities that he has had. Eight points and a plus eight in 34 games, replacing Jake Bean, who has eight points in 28 games, but is a plus three. And we're expecting a lot more from him. He's been a top guy the last few seasons, getting paid almost four and a half million for five more seasons after this one. So we've been talking about a lot about if Jake Bean stays or goes, and I think the consensus in the comments is that he is most likely going. Again, the question becomes, is that an off-season move since we are not pressured for time? And do we just keep him in the, in the, in the emergency backup? If our seventh D-man is Jake Bean, I'm a lot happier than having Jeremy Lozo as our seventh defenseman. Just as in the goaltending, we were thinking of trading Ben Bishop and rolling with Wilm and Gustafsson. Wilm gets injured, Gustafsson can't handle it, Bishop became our starter for like a month, and now he's our full-time backup. So rolling with the three-headed monster, rolling with a really good backup is not a bad idea. So I'm not as pressured to make a defensive move right now. It's more about the third line and the penalty kill that we're looking to improve our pony kill, I believe it's seventh worst in the NHL. So there were a, a few possibilities do uh, based on the trade blocks in the last one. So I can't go through every suggestion, but there were definitely some themes in the comments. There were a few that were saying to pick up Shea Theodore from the Vegas Golden Knights for a first round pick. But the thing is, a lot of the players who are on the blocks don't quite hold to realism. Shea Theodore on the Vegas Golden Knights, 33, 26, and 4. 
even on an expiring deal, I doubt that they're trading their top or second best defenseman with a record like that. Chicago Blackhawks, they have Kubalik and Boone Jenner on the block. That's great, but they're also 35, 21, and 4. I doubt they're going to trade their middle six and bottom six guys who have been doing so well just because they're on expiring deals. So that's why I'd like to stay away from players like that. Even Jonathan Taze over here on the Sharks, they're 32, 26, and 3. They're pushing for the playoffs. He's a great veteran, strong defensively. I don't know if it makes a ton of sense to trade for him. Even though I'd love to trade for Jonathan Taze, I don't think the Sharks would want to move him when they're trying to push in the Pacific Division, which is wide open. However, there is a, there are a couple players that I am tempted by. Those being Adam Lowry on the Winnipeg Jets. They are 27, 28, and 4, and they have him on the block. And Andrew Kopp over on the New Jersey Devils. They're a winning team, though. 28, 26, and 8. Maybe they're trying to push. Andrew Kopp also on the block over there. So then the decision may just come down to who's the better fit. If we sort by skaters matching the block, Andrew Kopp, according to our scout, it says that he fits the second line. Not as ideal as he would be playing on the third line. And over on Winnipeg, both these players, by the way, have two years left on their contract, so one more after this one. Adam Lowry, according to our pro scout, does fit the third line, exactly where we would want him. So he is very strong defensively. He has the right fit. Yes, he's going to be signed for next year, but... I don't mind, worst case, we just trade him at the beginning of next season if that means that we get the player who fits better. So before I start pulling the trigger on any trades, let's hop into the comments. A great comment here from Michael. He says, in my opinion, I see three options. We could trade Tanev for Taze and shuffle the bottom six of what we have, keep everything else as is, Bean being an off-season move. As we saw with the goaltending, depth and options are a nice thing to have when the ship hits stormy waters. Couldn't have said it better myself. Benefit, high poise, and that's needed for the playoffs, and it's what this team needs more than anything else. The thing about Tanev, even though it was a common theme again saying to trade Tanev, he has so little value. We'd have to trade Tanev and a fifth to get a seventh, probably. We're not cl even close to the salary cap. He's on an expiring deal. I see no reason to have to trade Brandon Tanev right now. Just keep him as 13th, 14th forward, whatever. Option number two from Michael, no move. Move Marco to the second line, excuse me, from the second line to the first line, and move Tarasenko to the second line. It's time for Isaiah Marco to ascend to his rightful spot up there. The benefit would be spreading the wealth, as the second line scoring has been hit and missed thus far, and maybe Tarasenko can jumpstart that second line scoring. Defense and goaltending have held their end of the bargain. Option number three would be a hybrid getting Taze and Mahura, swap Marco, bring in some kids for the bottom six from the AHL. Contracts are traded for, the contracts that we're trading for would be in their last year of their deal, so no long-term money tied up. Rookies will be evaluated and would be mentored slash supported by the vets on the third slash fourth line. Wilmon Film for Rookie of the Year and Cap Mac for the Heart. Our alternate captain, the $11 million man, Nathan McKinnon. So great comment there from Michael. Thank you very much, my friend. Like I said, same thing applies to Jonathan Taze, but take what he said and just change Taze to Lowry, and I'm liking that very much. Moving on to Aiden, who says, Great video as always, loving the series. Few suggestions. I'd like to talk about Palat. He hasn't done well this year, and I think it's time to trade him. He's on an expiring deal, and I could see him wanting four million, maybe more. He actually wants about five. Actually, more like four and a quarter, but if we do trade him, maybe we should go after a third line center, Lowry or Pavelski, perhaps. The other thing is that maybe we could trade our first this year. Keep that in mind. We are a contender, and I feel like this team has the ability to go all the way. And if that's our, if that's the case, our first is going to be a late one. If we do trade our first, maybe we get a young third line right winger. Some have made a comment about Troy Terry, but again, it's not the greatest fit. Plus, we're looking at a more defensive third line. But I like what Aiden's saying here. These are things that can be talked about more closely to the deadline. Can't wait for the next one. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much, Aiden. Andrew says, I think if I'm making any moves, it's a veteran depth guy. Tay's pretty much the only one that popped up to me. Team has been pretty solid from an offensive standpoint. I think the need is defense, in particular, defensive forwards. The young guys are doing fine, but maybe lack that 200-foot ability. I think a realistic move for a Kraken team expecting to contend for the Cup would be slotting a Taze in for a Suzuki on that third-slash-fourth line and pounding kill. Leadership qualities don't hurt either. I also wouldn't be against staying put. Like I mentioned a few episodes ago about Trocek, good thing we stayed put with him. 
Sometimes the best move is no move at all. We know the morale is off, but the team may get a boost in confidence knowing that we feel that we can win with who we have now. And I 100% agree with that. The only difference is that I'm not sure I do think that we can win now with those defensive woes. We need a more uh, defensive identity, I suppose, for that third line. Third line checking, not third line scoring. But I do like what... Um, Andrew's saying in the sense that we don't need to start making big moves and bring in a scoring winger and bring in a big name D-man and move our, all of our first round picks and prospects. We're 38, 18, and 6. We're doing well. Don't need to do too, too much more. JVR Don saying that Suzuki does not look ready. He would send him down to the AHL. Would also trade Palat and look for new third liners at the deadline. I think it could be helpful to decide if third line is shut down or scoring. At present, they have offensive playmakers with uh, Chandler Stevenson simming like a playmaker too, but no snipers to score. Troy Terry from the Ducks could be a good option. Would give up the first round pick in a flash for Theodore as well. Again, Troy Terry would be great if we're going for that scoring identity, but I think that shutdown identity would be the best as JVR Don makes mention to. And then going to Jeremy's comment, he says, gotta agree with JVR Don. Suzuki is just not working out and either a trip to the minors or a change of scenery would make sense. Getting Taze in there for the playoff push just might be the ticket for a cup run. I just wish the Sharks weren't doing so well. Fully support Flurry over Bean moving forward as well. Loving the content all around. Keep it up. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Finishing off the YouTube comments with Lacton, who says, This team looks solid, and it's the reason why it is on top of the NHL. But in my head, I have some ways to boost the penalty kill. We have Appleton and Tanev as extra forwards, but one of them has to go. Don't like having Appleton in the AHL. I'd rather have him as the 13th forward than blocking the roster for our prospects. Palat is not performing this year, and as I mentioned a while ago, we should consider trading him. We can, he can be replaced by Stevenson on the third line, or even Jonathan Taze, as we've been saying a lot in this episode in these comments. He fits the bottom six, and his defensive stats are not bad. Other names that Laxon likes on the block would include the Detroit players, except for Arturi Lekkonen, but again, Detroit is such a winning team right now, it doesn't make sense that they have multiple forwards on their on their uh, block. Too bad that we have to help the AI GM so much, but that's just how it goes, I suppose. Sending Suzuki down to wake him up wouldn't be a bad idea, in my opinion. We could replace him by some prospect or some traded player. Other players we should consider trading would be Bean. Flurry is better this year, so for Bean, it's a shame being that seventh D-man. Again, I wouldn't do that long term. It would probably just be for the final 20 games. I do agree. You can't have a guy like him as your seventh D-man all year long. Last thing I would consider, trading the first round pick. Don't be scared of losing it if there's someone who's worth it. Let's go Seattle. Thank you, my friend. I've just been rolling through the trade blocks here. It's crazy how a team like Buffalo, 25, 28, and 7, their status is buyer, but Vegas... 20, 33, 26, and 4, their status is seller. So that's why you can't go by the statuses. We got to go by the team records and try to think what would they be thinking. That's why I don't lean as much to wanting to make a deal with the Devils for a guy like Andrew Kopp because they're kind of fringe. But for a team like Winnipeg, which now at the deadline, you know, every game matters. Being 28 and 26 or 27 and 28, that could be a big difference. So that's why I'm a bit more inclined to be okay with taking on Adam Lowry as opposed to anyone else. So thank you for all those comments. Addy left a huge one in the Discord server I can't get to right now. He did it on purpose and he made it like three pages long so I couldn't fit it into the video, but he gave some great suggestions, which included the point of, we do on this channel try to go after players we haven't had before. We had Jonathan Tays in Minnesota. Let's try and mix things up. Adam Lowry wouldn't be a bad idea. So. Taking all those comments into your, my consideration now, Adam Lowry would be a guy that I'm targeting here. I don't know if we're going to be keeping him long, long term, but he's 83, third line checking, two-way forward, defensive guy, fits the third line, not super expensive. I think he checks all the boxes and I'd love to take him on. Now, the sad part is going back the other way is one of the OG Kraken, a, an alternate captain to boot. Andre Palat, who has had amazing seasons ever since we claimed him from the Tampa Bay Lightning. One of the changes that we made in this team, drafting Andre Palat instead of Yanni Gourd. And man, he's had three full great seasons, so three and a half great years now. 223 points in 308 games, two big years right now, of course, in 2022-23 and 23-24, getting 64 and 65 points respectively. Hit some career numbers, made a lot of money, did a lot of great things, helped us out along the way. 
play. But he's just not been great on that third line, and we got to improve there defensively. And there's not a lot of room really in the top six for him. Isaiah Marco took his spot. So Andre Palat going to the Winnipeg Jets. You know, he can re sign over there, be a part of their, you know, they're kind of a fringe team. He could be a top six scorer for them moving forward and try to get straight back in the playoffs next season. For us, if he stayed here, he'd be going to free agency. So with Palat, we'd probably have to throw in a little bit of value. That's where I would probably add... Actually, hold on. Let me just offer this straight up first. I'd probably add Appleton or Tanev. Tanev probably wouldn't do anything. Oh, uh, you've actually failed to meet our expectations in value and trade block. Great. Thanks uh, for your disrespect. Let's try throwing in Tanev here. I think that they would say the exact same thing. So I'd probably... Gonna, we're probably going to go Palat and Appleton. Uh, Appleton going back to the team that we took him from the expansion draft. So with Tanev, not, not in the right city, let alone ballpark. So we'll, we'll throw in Mason Appleton. Appleton on expiring deal. We know he's not coming back as well. Just a victim of circumstance. Not enough room for him. He did play two full seasons in Seattle. 66 points in 228 games. Not horrible for a bottom six, mostly fourth line guy. I enjoyed having Mason Appleton on this team. We'll send him back to the team that drafted him back in the sixth round of 2015. Palat and Appleton for Lowry. Can we squeeze a pick out of this? Throwing a sixth Winnipeg. What do you say to that? Trade accepted. All right, so with the sixth round pick, Palat and Appleton, two OG Seattle Kraken going to the Winnipeg Jets for Adam Lowry and a sixth round pick. Good luck in Winnipeg to Appleton and Palat. Lowry, welcome to the team, Bella. Let's slot you in and see how you fit. I think he's going to be with the third line fit, playing with... Stevenson and Lind guaranteed a zero, but I'm hoping for a plus one on that line. So Adam Lowry on this third line. Yes, a plus one. He fits the third line very well, actually. With Cole Lind and Chandler Stevenson, we get a plus one. Even if it doesn't matter, it's just a stronger third line. On the fourth line, Shaw, Suzuki, and Gambrel. I think one of Shaw or Suzuki are the ones that come off. They can go replace uh, Appleton down in the AHL. So the question is, is it Ryan Suzuki or is it Mason Shaw? Suzuki has the better potential. I don't know, Shaw's three years older. Might come down to face-offs here at 75 and 83. Yeah, I think we'll keep Mason Shaw for the moment. Uh, now the question, do we send down Suzuki or just keep him as a healthy scratch? I think getting playtime would be better. So sending, we will, I'm gonna send Suzuki down. Uh, we'll add uh, Brandon Tanev to the fourth line here. Uh, he gets it from a negative two to a negative one. One assist, negative one in six games played. He'll be a full-time 12th forward now. Uh, unless we wanted to call someone else up from the AHL. Uh, let me edit these lines first. So here's a new power play. We'll go plus five and zero. And the new penalty kill units will go plus one, plus one. McKinnon in for Cole Lind and Lowry in for Chandler Stevenson. So we'll go Trocek, Beniers, Lowry, McKinnon. Surprisingly, we have a lot of great defensive options. Trocek, Lowry, McKinnon, uh, Stevenson. But, you know, it's just struggling a bit defensively in that bottom six. So that's where we care the most. AHL lineup now will look like this. Hold up. Ryan Suzuki would have to go through waivers. Just realized that. So that means Suzuki is either going to be 13th forward or 4th line forward. Not sure what's going to happen. We can't send him down. So that means we'll just replace the AHL lineup with uh, this, the hole in the AHL lineup with somebody else. And it'll look like that. There we go. So back to the NHL, here are the lines moving forward for the final 20 games. We're looking for strong defensive performances. We did mention in the one comment there about how Tarasenko and Marco could be swapped. The only issue with that is the chemistry. It would go from plus 2-2 two, two to 2-1. Two, not a huge deal, but I'm not sure. You know, the, we did say that the scoring has on the second line has been hit or miss, and it's not a huge difference in the chemistry. So I am absolutely open to it. Tarasenko 22 and 32. Marco, 30 goals, 26 assists. Maybe they turn into a runaway train that just can't be stopped scoring-wise. But let's start to see what happens with this first game of this team that will hopefully carry us to a Stanley Cup victory, taking on our divisional rivals, the Vancouver Canucks, who are right behind us in the Pacific. This would be a huge win for us. They're 36-23-4. and four. We're 38-18-6. and six. March 8th, 2025, game number 63. Let's hit it with Adam Lowry in the lineup. First period, no scoring. Shots 15 to 12 for Vancouver. Second period, 1-0 Seattle's Hayden Flurry. We kept him in the lineup and he is rewarding us for it. 1-0 Seattle. Anything from Cole Lind again? Oh, look at that. What are the odds? Cole Lind against the team that we took him from. And then Adam Lowry in his Kraken debut. And Nathan McKinnon, his first game on the penalty kill. Back to back. 
back-to-back -back amazing storylines for nothing Seattle. Oh my goodness, with under five minutes to go now. And that'll be all she wrote. It is a 33 save shutout for the rookie. Wilm on film, Hollywood Payton, first star, 33 saves. Nate McKinnon, a goal and an assist. And Adam Lowry, in his Kraken debut, scores a goal and an assist. Wow, what a night in Seattle. So we're going to sim through the trade deadline now. We did what we wanted to do. We have nothing left. So I'm happy to just continue simulating through it. I don't want to make any deals even if they came our way. Uh, I don't want to change up all the lines and everything. Keep everything that has been working going. So huge moves here at the deadline as the Panthers acquired Shea Theodore and Joe Pavelski from Vegas for two first round picks and a prospect there, Sonnenberg. So that's huge. Uh, Samuel Montembeau going on waivers, our good friend from the Canadian Montreal in the real world. Pfft, those are some tough numbers at an 80 overall. I will decline the option. Now at the Canada Life Center against the Winnipeg Jets. We're going to keep Peyton Wilm between the pipes. It's going to be Adam Lowry and Andre Palat going head to head here just a couple days after being traded for one another. Let's see what we can do here on the road. First period, 1-0, Vladimir Tarasenko on that second line. Second period, 2-1, as his goals from Mark Scheifele and Pierre-Luc Dubois. 2-1 Jets as they take the lead with a strong second period. Third period, we're down by one, out shooting Winnipeg by just a hair. Through the first 10 minutes or so, nothing coming. You say Saro standing tall, a simulation monster. Power play opportunity for the Kraken, killed off by Winnipeg. Five minutes to go now. Power play for the Jets. And Kyle Connor gets it on the power play. Possibly an empty netter. Doubtful, but possible. And that'll end it. 3-1 the final. Strong performance from Peyton Wilm. But just tough as we couldn't get the scoring going. Now up against Nathan McKinnon's old team. The Colorado Avalanche, who are 30, 29, and 5. We'll get Big Ben Bishop between the pipes. And you know what? I totally forgot with Andre Palat gone. We played the last couple of games without our second alternate, or whatever first alternate. With the captain, of course, being Vladimir Tarasenko and alternate Nate McKinnon. Our other alternate on this team hasn't even been named. So I believe... Just looking at the names who are here, that I think would make the most sense to give it to Ryan Pulak. A good name on the defense. Uh, I'm tempted also to give it to Jaden Schwartz, but I lean Pulak because he's going to, he, you know, we're committed to him longer. He signed for, I think, six more years. So, uh, I, an 86 overall, he's a big piece on the defense. I know we're also committed to guys like Miller and Bear, but Pulak's been here just a little bit longer, and he would be, I guess, technically called the top defender on our team, maybe. It's tight between him and Bear. Depends if you look at it more offensively or what. But regardless, I think Pulak can get the other A. Always subject to change moving forward. No problem if you feel strongly about someone else. But we'll keep it rolling like that, heading into the back half, uh, back 20, less than 20 games now, 18 games. So we'll simulate through this one against the Colorado Avalanche, looking for win number 40 on the road. And it is a 3-1 victory. Big Ben Bishop standing tall once again. And that gives us win number 40 on the season after 65 games. Here at home against the Coyotes, we'll go Big Ben Bishop again. It's a 4-1 loss. So I think now is a good time to try and get Wilm back into the, the, the swing of things. Bishop looking great though. 909 save percentage, 2.65 goals against average. And four out of his 19 wins have come on a shutout. So Peyton Wilm definitely going to get the, mo the majority, if not almost all the games down the stretch here. We want to get him ready for the playoffs. He was out for all of, was it all of December or all of January with injuries? So we want him to get tuned up. Let's go into the calendar simulation now and we'll pick things up uh, against the Kings here with a back-to-back -back there. That'll be the next time Bishop gets into some action. The Minnesota Wild are just at 500. We beat them 3-1. to one. A great performance once again from Peyton Wilm. Couple games coming up against the Flames, then the Oilers. So get a little B&B &B in Alberta. On the road, 5-4 victory. On the road once again, 29-35 and whatever. We beat them 4-3 in overtime. Edmonton Oilers, we lose 4-2 against them in Alberta. We bring it back home to the Climate, Ple Climate Pledge Arena. And we take it 6-1 to one in front of the home fans. How do you do? Dallas Stars now, Tarasenko, wrist sprain, classic, Vladimir Tarasenko. Oh, man. So that's, you know, that's where Palat would have slotted in for the uh, top to six here. But I do enjoy some Chandler Stevenson. He's been okay offensively for us, 20 points in 54 games. Or do we put Ryan Suzuki in that second line spot? Uh, how's his fit? He does fit the second line better. We could even put him on the top line. 
I'd be tempted to see Mason Shaw's fit as well. He fits the second line. You know what? Let's go Mason Shaw. Let's go a little crazy here. Mason Shaw on the second line. Give it a plus two. And Ryan Suzuki comes in as the fourth line centerman. Let's see how that does for a few games here. I'm going to fix up the lines. And then we'll simulate a few games like that. All right, that's all taken care of. Uh, Got to pause the simulation here because it always looks weird when you come out of the calendar. Woo, what's going on? There we go. 7-5 loss. Yikes against Dallas. But we get right back into it. My bad. I forgot that it was back-to-back -back here. Uh, then Anaheim. At least it's a 4-3 win for us to switch it up with Ben Bishop, but that's okay. 3-2 loss against the Edmonton Oilers. Tough, tough matchups against them. Uh, LA Kings. I'm going to give the Kings to Wilm, and then we'll go Bishop against the Sharks here. 3-1 win against them. Very, very nice performances from Peyton Hollywood Wilm. A couple more weeks till Tarasenko is back, so the lines may like be like this to end the season. Uh, I'm really hoping for big things from Mason Shaw on that second line. I should probably check what his stats are at the moment now. Four goals, 25 assists right now. I didn't see what they were the last couple of games, but we'll keep note at least from this point on. Up against the Sharks now at the Shark Tank. Actually, oh, Tarasenko's fully healed. Oh, I thought it was still a little bit more time, so great. And that is a 5-1 victory. There we go. Mason Shaw had an assist in that one. Looking good. 30 points on the year now. So we'll get Peyton Wilm back between the pipes. Bishop, another very serviceable game in relief right there. What's up with Tanev? 20 games, 5 assists, negative 4. Not crazy, but he's doing the job down there. Uh, Suzuki, 7 goals, 21 assists, negative 4. So he has 29 points, uh, sorry, 28 points of his own. Mason Shot's tight between Suzuki and Shaw. Maybe I'll go Suzuki on the wing and Shaw up here, excuse me, um, Shaw back on the fourth line, because I'm, I don't, I want to give Suzuki ice time, that's why I think I'll just take out Tanev, and, uh, roll a fourth line like that. All right, so lines will be like this moving forward with our captain back at full health. Always happy to see that. We'll continue on now. Uh, we'll pause against the... Uh, I guess we'll, yeah, we'll go see the Hawks at the end of the season, but no need to really see any games before then. I'll give Wilm to the Blues. We'll go Bishop against the Wild, and then Wilm will end off the season. So let's see the next little string of games here, starting off against the Flyers, a very strong team in the East with 45 wins on them at the moment of our encounter. And it's a 5-2 victory for the Kraken. Devils, who ended up dropping below 500, we beat them 3-2. Looking for win number 50 against the Anaheim Ducks now. On the road, it's a 2-0 shutout from Hollywood Wilm. What a way to get our 50th win. We dropped that one 4-2 against the Blues, but wow. 50 wins. Needless to say, we are clinched for the playoffs. Have we clinched top spot in the division? We forget that. We clinched top spot in the conference. What a year it's been. Let's get Bishop between the pipes against the Wild. Finish it off with, off with Wilm against the Blackhawks. And I can't wait to see some of these numbers. On the road at the XL Energy Center now. It's a 3-2 shootout victory. Very, very nice. And we'll get Peyton Wilm in for one more on the road in Chicago. At the United Center, let's end the season with a bang. Hawks are 45-30-6. We're 51-24-6. Let's try and get win number 52 in this franchise season. First period, 2-0 Kraken. Isaiah Marco on the power play and Chandler Stevenson on the power play. 2-0 Kraken shots, 18-5. Second period, 3-1 now. Benier scores early, then Patty Kane scores the lone goal for the Hawks. We're almost tripling their shots, we're tripling their goals. 3-1 Kraken in the final 20 minutes of the 2024-25 season. Dylan Gambrell scores early to make it 4-1. It's a three-goal lead, shots 36-13. A destruction of a very good hockey team in the Chicago Blackhawks. 5-1, Adam Lowry, there he is. Just padding the stats. Five minutes to go. Can we hit 40 shots here? Oh, Chalowski, 6-1. to one. What a night. What a night. Shots 41-15. to 15. Oh, my goodness. We're ready for the playoffs. Stevenson, a goal and two assists. Matty Beniers with a goal and assist. And Mason Shaw with three assists. Let's go. What a playmaker. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, you're Seattle Kraken. 52-24-6. Anyone still have games left? No. Let's take a moment to check out the standings. So in their fourth NHL season, the Seattle Kraken are President's Trophy winners. 
It took us four years, but we made it, my friends. 110 points, best in the NHL. 52, 24, and 6 was the record, scoring almost three and a half goals for per game, far ahead of most teams. Vegas was down there, 3.43, right behind. But goals against at 2.63 wasn't the number one team, but how about number two, right? The Lightning were crazy defensively at 2.29. So the best offensive team, second best defensive team for goals for and against. Power play at 19.2 continued to improve very nice. That has us at 1, 2, 3, 4, tied 4, so 5, so 6, tied for 6th on the power play percentage and penalty kill let's see it let's see it up to 81.6 good so from 75 to 80 80 to 81.6 it was a slow improvement still closer to the bottom half but we'll take a any any and all improvement the menus are just so slow but there we are at 81.6 uh, great record at home on the and on the road. We went 8-2-0 and oh to finish the season. What a way. Just great little move. Feel free to add this to your assistant GM CVs as well. I'll put on my own CV. This was a great, great season. Let's get into the numbers, my friends. Nate McKinnon, 37 goals, 60 assists, and 97 points. A new Kraken high, that's for sure. And a new career high in assists, I believe, with 60. Yeah, new career high in assists. 60 on uh, and a plus 47 as well i think that's a career high too what a season from nate mckinnon his second on this um of this contract that he signed with us of 11 million per year just four more years on this as well maddie Beniers, 87 points from the junior now in his third nhl season not as much as last season down by two there but 54 assists a career high 87 points not quite 89 but hey i won't blame him you know you don't got to tell anybody it's it's okay just between you and me buddy 87 points is still acceptable plus 48 Isaiah Marco, in his rookie season, puts up 41 goals and 78 points, plus 33. Take a bow. What a season. And a 17.5 shooting percentage as well. That's close to one in every five shots going in. That's crazy. Jaden Schwartz still got it at the age of 32. 69 points for him. He has one more year on that contract that he signed. That is pretty consistent with what he's been doing. Much better than last season and more consistent those numbers from the year before that, 22-23. 25 goals, a Kraken and career high, I believe. Yeah, no, not a career high, but his most since 2014-15. 69 points, great year from Jaden Schwartz. Vinny Trocek, 69 points as well. Very consistent as he has been in the 60, high 60s to low mid 70s in all three of the seasons that he has had here in Seattle. He's signed for one more year after this one. Do we keep him that long? We signed him thinking that he'd be gone in a couple of years, but he's been a great piece for this team and I love him. Vladimir Tarasenko, 61 points in 78 games. A bit of a down year from him comparatively, but still strong enough. Pretty consistent with his goal totals. Not as much assist power coming. Uh, I'm not sure if he didn't feel like passing as much. His shooting percentage went up, but that's okay for the aging captain. No harm, no foul at the age of 33. From there, it does definitely start to drop off. Uh, Chandler Stevenson, 38 points in 77 games. With us, he scored 30 points in 64 games. Really turned it around since the deadline, too. So 10 goals, 20 assists, plus 8. Exactly what we were looking for when we traded for him. So happy to see that from Chandler. Mason Shaw in his rookie season, 33 points. Very nice year from the playmaker. Negative 5, but he did a good job, I would say. Uh, Ethan Bear, 31 points and a plus 39. Great year from the defenseman. Dylan Gambrell, 30 points, 15 goals, 15 assists from the fourth liner. Career highs there as well. He is a really good player, I do have to say. Great bang for your buck there. Signed for two more years on a, on a discount. Ryan Suzuki scored 29 points in 72 games. Uh, negative six, as, similar to Mason Shaw, but I gotta say, at the end of the day, I was impressed with Ryan Suzuki. Not too shabby. We were playing him above his pay grade. He did what he could. Third line center, we brought somebody in, lowered the lessened his load, and I think he thrived from there. Cole Lynn, strong season of 27 points on that fourth line. Keandre Miller, 25 points and a plus 37. Adam Lowry, what did he do on this team? He, There you go. That's all we wanted from him. Five points plus four. Strong defensively. That's all we needed from Adam Lowry in those 20 games played. Five points plus four. Bang. Love it. Ryan Pulak, 20 points and a plus 15. David Yerichek, 19 points and a plus 15 in his rookie season. Still at a 78 overall, playing almost 18 minutes a night. 
Dennis Chalowski, 18 points and a plus 14. Hayden Fleury, 13 points and a plus 15. Him and Chalowski are a great pairing in 54 games played. Bean, same numbers in those 28 games played. Tanev, 5 points, negative 4 in 20 games. Now I'm excited to see Peyton, Hollywood, Wilm. Let's see it. Oh man, those are some good numbers. 28, 11, and 3 with 5 shutouts, a 920 save percentage, and 2.37 goals against average. 44 games played. Ben Bishop, 34 games, 22, 9, and 1 with 4 shutouts, 910 save percentage, 2.6 goals against, but wow. 21 years of age, 6 foot 4, his first full NHL, first NHL action at all. And it's numbers like that. That's Calder stuff right there. It's me tough between him and Isaiah Marco. Marco probably will get it as the forwards usually do, but nothing to be sad about there, Peyton. What a year. Take a bow, my friend. Uh, looking at the entire NHL now, and then we'll take a look at some players you may be concerned with, such as Andre Palat. In the entire NHL, Patrice Bergeron beat Nate McKinnon by two points. 39 years of age. 86 overall, Patrice Bergeron. Wow, 99 points. How Out of nowhere. Good for him. Mark Shifley tied with McKinnon with 97. Newhook, Kane, Crosby, Aho, Matty Beneers there tied with Panarin with 87 points. Same for Rupe Hints. What? 87 points from him. Nabrinkit, McDavid, Kucherov, Svitov's uh, a generated prospect. Alex Ovechkin still able to put up 44 goals at the age of 39. The Morris Richard goes to Mark Shifley with 53 goals. How about that? Uh, looking at defense now, who are the top scoring defensemen in the NHL? Didn't have really a high scoring defenseman on the team. Boquist and Hedman tied with 64 points. Petrangelo, Theodore, 63 60. Uh, and then looking at all of the goalies in the NHL, most wins going to Darcy Kemper on the Dallas Stars. <laughs> Dallas Stars, Detroit Red Wings, 38 21 and 4. What? Keith Kincaid? 80 overall, Keith Kincaid goes 37 21 and 5. Good for you, bud. That's crazy. Robin Leonard, 37, 25, and 4. Shesterkin down there. Uh, good numbers. Anderson, Hart, Hellebuck, Vanacek, Sebastian Kosa even on the Penguins. 76 overall. That's why. Overall really doesn't matter. 32, 20, and 6 as a, and 4 shutouts. Come on. Uh, Demko, Bennington, uh, Ilya Samsonov, Varlamov, Blackwood down the list. We go there. Um, looking at rookie skaters in the entire NHL, Isaiah Marco probably ran away with it, I would think. Yeah, 78 points from him. Connor Bedard, though, 56 points in 82 games with the Penguins, up to an 86 overall already. Brathwaite there, a generated prospect, first overall pick in 2024 with the Flames, scored 53 points. And Peyton Baines, 32 goals with the um, uh, Colorado Avalanche. Rookie goalies, of course, it's Peyton Wilm taking it. But you know what? Actually, Sebastian Kosa, I forgot about him. So looking just at wins, Kosa did take it, but best numbers by far going to Peyton Wilm. Lucas Dostal. HL20 Ducks franchise mode legend, Lucas Dostal. Dostal. So that's all that we wanted to look at league-wise, but forgot we want to take a look at some of the players we've traded away, of course. Over on the Winnipeg Jets, let's see what Andre Palat did. He ended up playing 85 games on the season. Pfft, what a year for him, really putting in some overtime. Now at the age of 34, he scored 7 points and was a plus 1 in 23 games. Yep, yeah, that's what we would expect of him, so... I'm glad that he was able to get a little bit of ice time. I'm curious to see how much ice time he did get. What kind of improvements did he see there? So, actually, not a lot. That's disappointing for me. But hopefully next season, they'll have, they'll, they will have uh, an improved role for him. Did Mason Appleton get any ice time? Uh, yes, three points, negative five in 23 games. Going to the Washington Capitals here to see Jared McCann, who we traded in the deal for Chandler Stevenson. In the 69 games, he scored 15 goals and 15 assists for 30 points, but was a negative 14. So you don't do with that what you may. So let me know if you want to see point totals from any other players. But with all that done, we will move forward now into the playoffs to see who we're facing in round number one of the 2025 postseason. And that will be the San Jose Sharks. The team that we didn't want to trade with, they did end up making the playoffs with a record of 41, 34, and 7. So let's check out their lines here before we call it an episode. Who will we be facing in round number one of next episode? Let's see here. First line is Eklund, Hurdle, and Evander Kane. There he is. Timo Meyer, Logan Couture, and Maxime Bermistrov. So the player that we passed on at fourth overall to take Isaiah Marco 
uh, Maxime Burmistrov was who went at five. We thought he may have been the better prospect, but Marco had the better line fit. Burmistrov scored 43 points in 82 games this season. So Isaiah Marco definitely looking better as of now. Uh, he's on that second line with Couture and Timo Meyer. Rudolf Balsers, Pinelli, Francesco Pinelli, and Ivan Barbashev on the third line. Fourth is Noel, Jonathan Taze, and Riley Tufty. Defense, Mario Ferraro and Ryan Merkley. Eric Carlson and Osterley, then Benning and Burns. Burns, 40 years old, 78 overall. Look at that. Goaltending, it is Sergei Bobrovsky, backed up by Alexander Gorgiev. 83 overall now for Bobrovsky, 36 years of age. Still on that contract. Scratches, Grigor, and Bonino. So Dylan Gamble going, against up, going up against the team that we took him away from in the expansion draft. My friends, I think we're ready to roll into the playoffs. Let me know if you have any thoughts on anything that should be changed. Do we roll with the fourth line like that? Anything to touch defensively that you would want to see? I know that Chalowski and Fleury, I'd mentioned them being a pair. I forgot that he and Pulak were the pair. Juracek has been playing with Fleury. Should we move that around or do we just leave it be? Special teams on the power play, the units were looking like this and the penalty kill was looking like that. Goaltending, I think it's definitely Peyton Wilm backed up by Bishop. Scratch Matches are the same, and I think that is just about it. If there's anything we look at quickly here, maybe it's the AHL. We'll be taking on the Iowa Wild down there. The Palm Springs Hockey Club there finished 56 20 and 6. There are going to be a few names, to say the least, that are going to be fighting for bottom six minutes in the NHL next year. Jameson Reese, 67 points. Isaac Rosean with 65 points. Maloney, 65 points and 51 assists. Dawson Mercer, 62 points. Heiskanen, 29 goals and 50 points. A lot of players are going to be pushing for the AHL next, from the NA AHL to the NHL next year. Primo and Tarasov, uh, neither amazing, but both look pretty solid. Goals against average was great. Save percentage could have been better, but there are the AHL numbers if you're curious to see those. And a final consideration may be, do we think about sending out any of these uh, extension offers before we head too deep into the playoffs and into the month of June? Namely to Matty Beneers, who are, who's gonna be wanting nine, 10 million. Yeah, so he's down to take eight years at 10.425. 85% of that would be 8.86, so you know, 8.750 for eight years. That's like almost too good to be true. I'm down to send that offer today. So I will do that first thing next episode if that is what everyone agrees upon. Chandler Stevenson, I'd like to keep him on the team in a perfect world. And it wouldn't be too costly, but again, it's just a lot of players fighting for those positions. Cole Lind, I would definitely want to bring him back. He wants one and a half or so. Tanev, don't think so, but hey, you know, on a league minimum as a 13th forward, I don't know. And Popov, by the way, poof. He was drafted, what, second or third round? He's 78 overall, mediumly potential, third round pick. Look at those puck skills. I love that. See, I don't like when players are wonky where it's like 75 slap shot accuracy, but 98 shot power and 98 wrist shot accuracy, but 72 wrist shot power. That's just weird. This, however, this is saying this player has exceptional hands. This is like superstar X Factor ability level. 97 deking, hand eye, passing, and 95 puck control. Four star defense as well. Can't wait to see what Vitaly Popov will do in the NHL or AHL next season. Another player that's going to be pushing. So, and even Sloan's going to be a defenseman in there. So, uh, Matejchuk is going to be pushing. Uh, we always want to get Kyle Wood a couple minutes. Maybe Kyle Wood goes into, the, into some playoff games next episode. But I will end it off there. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Be sure to leave all of your thoughts down here on YouTube in the comments or over on the Discord server. Link in the description. Leave a like if you are excited for this postseason and have hope for this team. We have had round one and two exits in the past few years. But we are ready to go for conference finals, cup finals, and Stanley Cup championship after winning the president's trophy in our fourth season also do consider subscribing if you haven't already to the channel you'd be made aware of all the uploads here for nhl 22 franchise mode nhl 22 guides nhl 07 dynasty mode and our fifa 22 career mode the ongoing series at the moment if you're watching in the future then those series could be different so be sure to take a few minutes and check out the channel and the link for the twitch page also down in the description where we're playing formula one mlb the show 21 and more. So once again, thank you so much for taking the time. Looking so forward to the playoffs, and I will see you in the next one.